Hi everyone, we're live at the Unreal Tournament stream. I'm Stacy Conley, Community Manager. I'm Steve Polge. Jim Brown. Joe Wilcox. And today we are going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be giving an update on what's been happening with uh, Unreal Tournament. But first of all, uh, our new blog is live. Uh, there's no new content on it yet. There will be tomorrow, and you can see that at unrealtournament.com. And also, be sure if you have any tutorials or anything that you want us to see to put them up on wiki.unrealengine.com. And there's also a link to the wiki from the blog. So if you have any ideas for blog posts or anything, let's let me know. So how about an update? What's going on in the Unreal Tournament world? You want to just, talk? I just got back. So. He, yeah, Steve so, just got back from So from we're vacation. having trouble finding Steve Polds. That's the first part of our update. <laughs> uh, he's back. Uh, so we actually made a lot of, I, 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 you just looked at the game. I'm hoping you saw some good progress yeah. while oh, we yeah, were out. It's, um, and it's kind of, kind of, a lot of the core systems are coming online. We had the announcer in, so you can get double kills and headshots and mm -hmm. all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, Joe's been working Headshots. a lot on getting uh, scoreboard and HUD and UI yeah. Most started. Of the um, yeah, uh, all of the weapons, but the sniper rifle and well, the, the sniper rifle. Matt finished that up. It should he? be in code now. Sweet. Uh, so the redeemer is the only core weapon that we're missing at this point. Um, we'll talk a bit more about that in a minute yep. about some of the weapons that we have in, and um, <clears throat> we got a new map in. Uh, to start testing uh, a little bit larger scale environments. That first one we had from Dave was a really cool. Not it's going to be a great one v one, but it was it was a little bit smaller. So two v two. The the new one we have is actually really really cool. Has some nice nice traps. Uh, uh, not physical actually, traps. Actually, we have two I mean. new maps because we also have uh, Nick's new one. Yes, and, and Donaldson one, started right, one as well. An excellent map. Yep. Uh, but, and congratulations to Nick Donaldson. He yep. just had a baby boy. Yay. So he'll be he'll be out for a couple of weeks. So we're not going to have his map for two uh, weeks. And what else has been going on? Uh, lots and lots of just small tweaks to bug fixing and things like that. Um, we started getting some better systems online for, like, ragdolls are in and um, uh, a couple more yeah. gameplay elements. Uh, what else? What yeah, else I mean, playing the game, it really feels like Unreal Tournament now. Yeah. And it, you know, feels that's pretty that's smooth. the comments we were having. We, we yeah, had yesterday. Yeah. We, we still had, had, had a couple, of, including Tim. Tim came by and played, and said uh, and he was amazed Parna. because it, it felt it felt just like Unreal. So it's a good thing. Yeah, that was a really good thing to hear. And we're still uh, still tweaking movement, still uh, you know figuring out exactly where we want to get to. But I think it's made it feels pretty good now, and and there's still some stuff we gotta think about, especially with, you know, balancing it for, for gameplay and things like that, but uh, I'm really happy with the direction of everything. Uh, weapons are all fun to play with. It's cool to see uh, we've had some community contributions. We that. certainly have. Um, well, first of all, last week we were talking about uh, concept art, and we had Chris Perna here and Josh Marlowe, and uh, he, he was explaining to people how to submit com uh, concept art, so we actually have a few here from our forum member, Gooba, We'd like to show you. These are fantastic. I can't see if it's switched over. Yes. There they are. So yeah. he's he's done a really great job. Um, he listened to what Chris had to say, and Chris has been talking with him about uh, giving him some feedback, you know, directly to him, you know, about these these pieces, and he's done some some really really cool stuff. He did some characters, and then he also did a, a quick environment. So he does it all. Yeah. And the one that people have been talking about the most, I think. Definitely in our office. Not the camera. Not the camera. Oh, that was cool. There's a whole These thread are... about the camera. And I'm not quite sure what we would do with it, but uh, it's, there's some good ideas in there. Yeah, this is the one here we go. Yeah. This, is, this is super cool. It's definitely in the direction, I think, that, that we're looking for for weapons and, and concept yes. art. So. You know what I really like about this? I like how clean it is. I like how you know it's not a whole bunch of panels that don't do anything. It looks like a real gun. Yeah. yeah. And it's recognizable and just very clean lines. And, and this is one of those things that we were, were in the office and somebody said, hey guys, look at this. And everybody started, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, very nice work. So thank you very much, Gooba. But this is, this is definitely one of the directions that we'd, we'd like you to go in submitting your concept art and also submit your contributions such as Halcyon did, who's our second contributor. And he uh, submitted a bio rifle, and this is Blueprint, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he did this in Blueprint. Uh, we worked with him back and forth a little bit. There was a couple bugs 
Um, I think we have it all ironed out in the, the most recent release. Um, some really cool stuff that he got the goo like dripping down the walls. He's got small traps and big traps and uh, increasing damage by charge and just all kinds of really, really cool stuff. Need some diamond lights on. Um, one of the things actually with the bio rifle though, is it, that is one of the weapons that we'd love to get uh, the community thinking about and prototyping maybe some ideas for uh, sort of bringing the functionality of the bio rifle forward. I mean, thinking about new ideas for for regular and alt fire, you know, in terms of right. updating them in any way you guys think of. And, and another, and then the other weapon that we're also really uh, want to think about is the uh, the alt fire for the impact hammer. Um, I mean, I don't think we've ever really found the the right uh, functionality there, and so we'd love some. Uh, and, and not just, you know, I mean, obviously, design ideas on the forums are great, but what's even better is if you. Uh, get in with the blueprint and prototype your idea yourself and, and then it's really easy to to show it to other people and right because I mean, this was fantastic for us yeah I mean I mean the blueprint for the bio rifle is in there and it's pretty much fully working so you can just use that as a base and start just tweaking it around and take your ideas and run with it let's see if we can come up with something that's really really cool that that isn't necessarily the the behavior that's there I mean I know there, the bio <coughs> rifle tends to be a little polarizing so I'd like to see some new ideas. Yeah, and he went through and did not just the functionality, but he did animations and effects and all this other stuff. And if you have an idea, you don't even necessarily need to go that far. We'd love just to see straight functionality and, and kind of explain what you're doing. And, um, uh, he's also he's also working on a um, minigun too. Uh, yeah, he started a version of the Stinger I saw him posted in the forum this morning. Um, it's another one of those ones that we've never really been able to agree on. Is what is the alt fire? For the minigun or the stinger yeah. supposed to look like, and yeah. so he had a couple of ideas that he wanted to play with. Yep, I think that's um, great. And he got the first one up and up and prototyped, and uh, it's uh, it's in the forums. Uh, we haven't integrated it in the game, but um, the uh -huh. bio rifle interested we did. In trying so that. he's he's the second person I think to get our our contributor, contributor tag. So yeah. good job. And he his uh, he will be in the credits too. He'll yeah. have his name in the credits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I guess we can, oh, before we move on to questions, uh, we put uh, two servers up. We have a UT server and a UT3 server up right now, so we can do a little bit of community playing. We don't know when we're going to jump in, so keep your eye on the forums, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and if we're going to jump in and play, we'll let you know. We also have a TeamSpeak server, so we might be able to talk some of the guys into coming in and saying hello. And this is good for developers, too. You don't have to come in and play if you don't want to. You can just come in and talk to the devs. So um, we're probably going to do something uh, Friday afternoon, but we'll post on the forums. And for the questions, uh, J.O. Plus from the forums asks, regarding level design, are levels going to end up being built in the legacy power of two units, or will they move to decimal units as is seen in, on all current test maps? Does it matter? And uh, does it matter? <laughs> uh, so we've gone back and forth on this. We're not quite sure what we want to do internally. Um, the designers are kind of split. Some people like the 10 system. Some people still like the 8 grid. Uh, the main place that it's going to matter is once we get some art that's built and, and how what scale is that stuff built to. Um, if something is built, uh, like a model that's built to 256 by 256 or 512 by 512 grid, then it's obviously not going to fit in a map that's built to you know, 100, 500. Um, and the same thing for materials and textures, how they scale and, and, and get on the world. Um, so that's something we've kind of gone back and forth on. You can switch back and forth on the fly in the editor. So if you uh, just want to go in and, and prototype something real quickly and you like the old system, you can do that. Um, but I would encourage people to play with the new system as much as possible just to see what it can do. Um, we have kind of hit a middle ground ourselves uh, in that uh, we have some custom grid settings now. So instead of going 5, 5 10, 50, we added in a 25 um, and some extra grid lines to accommodate for that, um, which, again, you can, you can customize as much as you want in, in UE4. So I encourage you to play with it and, and see what works. Awesome. Uh, Peter K. would like to know, going back to weapons, what is the deadline for submitting weapon prototypes? Well, there's no deadline. I mean, obviously with the core weapons, I mean, right now we're just trying to get baseline functionality for all the core weapons so that uh, we have, you know, we can have everything together in a deathmatch alpha. Um, once we have all those in, I mean, there's no point in, in re reinventing the wheel, a wheel that we've already got working. Um, but certainly um, you guys can keep, you know, start prototyping either entirely new weapons 
or uh, playing around with new um, firing modes for some of these weapons like the, you know, the minigun alt fire, the impact hammer alt fire, the bio rifle, where we feel like we would really, really like to see some, um, some movement forward in the design ideas for that. And also, I mean, any of the other existing weapons, if you think you've got a great idea, we'd love to see your prototypes. And, and if we feel like it works in the game, I mean, it, it, we can, right. we'll put it in. And they don't have to think inside the box. Just, yeah. be, just because it was done in Unreal Tournament before, we can do some different things Absolutely. too. Yeah. yeah, that's the beauty of Unreal. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> and this, this question is a little funny because we had the discussion this afternoon, or it was this morning actually, and I was going through questions to ask today and it was asked. So <laughs> there's been a huge thread over the forums on uh, about lightning gun versus sniper rifle. So which do, what do we prefer? And we have oh. to, I have to say right up front that we don't prefer anything. <laughs> We're pretty much the same back as you guys. Back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty split. I mean, I know that I am by far prefer the sniper rifle in every instance. I think it's a better balanced weapon. I think that I what? know that... Campaign. Why is that joke? Well, I know that a lot of people think that camping is a bad thing, but being able to play defense effectively and be able to hide in the oh, shadows is a very valid uh, technique. You know, if you can find that good perch and start picking people off, why should you have a big beacon drawing a line back to you saying that you're there? Whereas the sniper rifle, you've got the dynamic flare, you've got you know a little bit of smoke. What it causes is. The difference in my mind is the lightning gun is, oh, look, follow the trail, whereas the sniper rifle is, I've been shot, turn around, start looking for the second shot. Maybe I'm going to see him on the second shot. Maybe I'm not. But it makes finding a sniper a skill versus following a line back. That's where I draw the line. I like them both, though. I mean, I use them both effectively, but... As a sniper and as a camper, you know, <laughs> he I certainly said it. Like I mean, the I have to say, <laughs> although I like the visibility, I, I'm actually on the other side where I prefer the visibility of the, of the lightning gun. But I, I don't feel I feel like our past lightning gun implementation had issues with the uh, um, the animation and the sound effects not really giving you good feedback on the firing rate. So I didn't find it I didn't find it that enjoyable to use. So obviously, you know, that's a different issue. Obviously, we do get that right this time versus the visibility issue. I prefer the, the first UT sniper rifle, but if you're talking about UT3, I really like the lightning gun. How about UT3? you? UT3? There was UT3 no lightning gun. Lightning gun. I'm sorry, UT2004 <laughs> lightning gun. I'll be uh, okay. I actually am very strongly in the middle. Uh, I would love to see both. Uh, I think that they both have a very strong place in the game, and I would love to see a little bit more differentiation between the two. Um, I love the classic sniper feel. Um, of, right. You know, like even going back to Unreal One, that was one of the weapons to use. Um, but the lightning gun being more Unreal, um, as a lot of people say, gives you the opportunity to do some things with like branching out and and mm -hmm. arcing and all, you know all you know all kinds of different mm -hmm. electricity effects and things that you can do with it. So we could put you know different ones in different maps or have one versus the other or whatever. Is there room for both in one map? Do sure. You think? I mean, in mid-range combat, the yeah. lightning gun. I think is a much better weapon. Yeah, I mean, maybe right. that's the difference. Right? The, the the people who and I'm I'm guilty of it. The, those people who run around with just the, nothing but a sniper rifle at mid range combat, it doesn't look nearly as good as somebody having a, a battle between you know two people with lightning guns. Yeah. That looks really cool. The effects where you can really yeah. see it. My problem is at that long range scale, where the the lightning gun is really just a big beacon of you know shoot at the guy up on the perch up there. But I, I totally agree. <laughs> I, 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 Joe, I, I, that's the point, It's not Joe. my fault you guys can't kill snipers. That's the it's your fault. <laughs> uh, even but sniper rifle in UT3 had yeah. a trail, didn't it? A little smoke trail? I guess I'd be concerned. A little bit. I, I think on a single map, I don't know, I think it might get unwieldy to have 15 weapons in your inventory. So yeah. I, I think probably on a single map, we... Sure. We, yeah, you might stick to one or the other. Yeah. But we could have one map that that slot yes. was taken up. Well, to give you an example, Curse, right? Curse is a great example. I think a, a lightning gun makes a lot more sense in Curse than a sniper rifle. Would, yeah. yeah. Right? You're, you're much tighter because hallways. You can't camp. Your, your attack scale is at that medium range, not the long range. So a, a lightning gun works really well in there. So if you were going to tell me, hey, Joe, we're going to replace all the sniper rifles in a map like Curse with lightning guns, go for it. But face, go back to face, right? Where I'm hiding up in a nook on the tower, I don't want that. <laughs> and I'm, my combat is all the way across the map. Mm -hmm. And so. that's where I think the difference between the two comes in. But I'm, I'm all for doing both yeah. of them because I think they I both have a both. place in the world. Yeah. Okay, decoy 11. 
Uh, he, his question is, if we could have a Trello.com roadmap for Unreal tor Tournament similar to the Unreal Engine roadmap that we have already. Um, that is something we are planning on doing. Um, I need to figure out exactly, I mean, we're getting close to the point now. I, I think you know, our first step, our first goal with um, development was to drive towards a, a really bare bones alpha so that we had a framework that we could start building on. And mm -hmm. so really at that point, there really wasn't much um, choices in what we were going to do. I mean, we're, we're kind of, we've got this path to get a basic, just basic deathmatch and team deathmatch and, a, you know, CTF working. And once we get to that point, then there's going to be a lot more choices and a lot more different directions we can go in. And, um, and also really we'll have a framework where we're really, I mean, even now we're encouraging people to start helping us out with, with weapons, uh, with prototyping vehicles and things like that. Um, but we're, we're getting close to the point once we have this, uh, this alpha, you know, baseline that uh, we really want to expand development to really start including a lot of people making, you know, uh, adding features on top of the base game, right. adding their own game modes. I mean, both both things that would be part of the core UT, but also going off and, you know, recreating your favorite classic game modes from Plasma and Real Tournaments or creating entirely new games. Um, and so I think that the roadmap will help both... Uh, it's going to be a more of a necessity. Help, us, ...help direct us with where they, they really want us to, what areas they want us to focus on but also help us recruit help from the community mm -hmm. in, uh, in getting some of these uh, projects done. Okay, and Decoy11 also wants to know, can we turn on broadcast archive for Twitch for those of us who missed the broadcast? I, I think I did this. Um, Joe, is it okay if we keep these archived for a few, few weeks? Oh, that's fine, yeah. On Twitch? Okay, and we also uh, will have them on YouTube after the fact. We've, we try to get them up the same day. Yeah. Um, Crotail asks, will we be able to have custom HUD and, and UI themes? Depends. Um, <laughs> that looked at, as I look at yes. Jess. The, the HUD system yes. itself is pretty flexible at the moment in the new widget system, so we can do it. The problem with custom HUDs comes down to what's a cheat Cheating. and what's not, right? It, it's very easy to cross that line with a custom HUD, and you have to have all sorts of checks and balances in there. So. At the very and to least, be clear, it's not even people that are intentionally cheating. Yeah. It's just something you do that you think fits better for you, but gives you an advantage that the other person doesn't have in a, yeah. in a purely competitive yeah. situation right. that is considered a cheat. Yeah. So and, and we certainly won't limit, I mean, obviously, Unreal Tournament's an open platform, so we won't limit anybody from doing anything they want. So really, we, what we're talking about here is the limitation of what we consider core UT core, gameplay yeah, core and UT. you know competitive. We, there, there's actually there's a, a really good... Not to stop play. on you, but there's, there's a really good discussion going on in the forums right now, the, the link you sent out about yeah. what to do with options and how many options we should offer. Yeah. Um, so if you haven't already seen it, I would definitely suggest Googling it and looking for it, because it's a really cool article, um, and there's a good conversation going on about how much customization we want to offer. But back to the idea of custom HUDs, from my point of view, the one thing that I want to make sure that you're able to do is move HUD widgets around decide which of the default hit widgets that we give you that you want to be visible on a screen. So if you really don't want to look at, I don't know, maybe the, the kill counter somewhere, or mm -hmm. if you want it to be up in the left corner, that there's a way to do that. That's what I'd really like to give in terms of uh, custom HUDs. Now, in terms of UI themes and being able to extend it past there, we're really too early to tell exactly what type of system we're going to have in place for that. I would love, depending on how we do the UI, to have custom, I mean, custom themes back to in the U window style where you could change it from blue or gold or something along those lines. Or even, you know, somebody could come in and completely replace the main menu. That might be possible, but who knows? We're, we're way too early before we can determine that. That opened a whole new world of UT to me when I found out that you could change colors. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh. <laughs> um, uh, that's, Crotail would also like to know, oh, Cam, get ready. I think the chat might blow up with this one. <laughs> will, you, will you Windows finally make a comeback, at least in some cap capacity? Um, <laughs> kind of, maybe. Here's the thing, right? We're building off of Slate right now, and Slate is very similar to a normal operating system's menu system. Slate is so, the UE4. Yeah, it's the UE4 um, user interface system. So at least in the very beginning, it's going to be somewhat you windows like now, there's some really good threads in the forums where we're talking about form and mm -hmm. flow and how Windows yeah. and how menus should work. And what I would like to see us is come up with a hybrid that's somewhere between UT2K4 and UWindows. I want to find out what in UWindows was really important and what everybody really wanted the ability to do. 
and see if we can come up with a slightly yeah. better way of doing it. I'm not sold that new windows is the best way to do this, <laughs> but because it's so close to slate, at least in the very beginning, it's going to be very similar to that. And then we're just going to keep iterating on it and iterating on it and iterating on it till we find something that really works. And the nice thing is in having it open, everybody will be able to, we'll, we'll iterate in public, we'll get a lot of feedback and we'll and be see able what to, like. to really try and find a good way to go. Plus we have all the UX labs here where we have teams that are working on usability and saying, oh no, you know, that's, that is kind of clunky. For example, my personal opinion here, having a file menu where you have to do file, new game, you know, multiplayer game, that's a whole lot of steps just to play a game. And I'm sure a UX team would figure that out right. very quickly. So I think we've got a lot more expertise going into this. So the short answer Certainly more is, than we have in the past. <laughs> yeah. This so do you, what do you think? Do you think it's mostly nostalgia or it was just that much? I, I think there's some, some really val valuable functionality. I mean, but I guess what we want to do is separate the things, the features that you Windows permitted, mm -hmm. like being able to easily switch between two different, um, you know, like your options menu and your server browser or whatever, those are really valuable and important features. Yeah. And the question, and this is not, we don't have, I mean, I, I frankly, I'm not really biased either way, whether you Windows is exactly the right answer or there's something else. We want to solve those problems, but we want to think about what is the best way to solve the, the actual functionality issues that will make, give our, our menus the best possible experience. Yeah. All right. Um, Joe was talking about UX. We, we do have a UX lab here now. Mm -hmm. And if you would like to check it out, um, epicgames.com slash UX, I think it is. If you're in the, in the area or you're going to be in the area, you could sign up and possibly come play one of our games. I okay. will say that I snuck you windows in already. <laughs> Uh-oh. Is the, is the chat moving? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> kind of Bob dropped. <laughs> You can leave now, by the way. You did your damage. <laughs> All right. Now we have a question from Nia Rej, who asks, if someone who lacks, lacks the technical skills to build 3D assets but draws a concept art that ends up being built into an asset by someone else and gets, into, in, gets used in the game, who's going to receive their credit for that? Well, I mean, definitely concept art is a really important part of the development process. As we process. see here. Um, and I, I would say certainly, I mean, I expect that the, the way that concept art is going to make it into the core UT is going to be that you, you, know, you, you put a concept art out maybe you know, based on something that uh, like Chris Byrne has asked for. You go back and forth with, our, our, you know, with Chris or, or other artists on refining that concept until it gets to the point where this is something that we agree we really want this built. And then you know, whether we build it, whether someone in the community builds it, if your concept was something that uh, that we decided we wanted, yeah, obviously you've done you've contributed an important way to the game. And, Great. And, and a lot of the people that are going to be building stuff are going to be parts of small mod teams, and we're, you know it's going to fall on on us and on them to communicate everybody that was involved in that process. Right. Uh, it's it's very very rare these days that we get something that was done by one person. You know, that's a yeah. fully complete yeah. asset, whether it's a yeah. a character or a map or whatever. Like there's typically yeah. several people involved yeah. in that. Although I think that the, it's, you know, we have to differentiate, sorry, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> differentiate English, between mods <laughs> and, and the core UT. And core UT is going to stay reasonably small. And you know, really, when we give credits for core UT, it's going to be for stuff that people did. I mean, I certainly expect that mods will do a good job. Yeah. But, and, and I would expect that for the, for, you know, generally for something that's going to be built for core UT, that you're going to want to use you know, our art development process, where we start off. And certainly, concept is a very key part of that, where we start off. Um, with a concept and work with our, our lead artist on refining that concept until it gets to the point where it's something we want to build. And you know, that's a key area of development. I mean, that, and that's something that we really need help with. So um, we're excited about getting contributions in terms of concept art. Right. I think the logo is a good way to look at it right now, right? We have a lot of competing people working on logos. Some fantastic logo logos, Crotales yeah, so they, they and are, Henriks. They are fantastic. And yeah. some of them are going, oh, hey, that's a neat direction. And they kind of move in that direction. Yeah. And I think in the end, you know, all these people are going to get recognized in some way, I would yeah. hope. So yeah. I, I think that's a, it's a valid yeah. sort of test case to work off of. And last but not least, character customization. How far are we going to go with it? Is it something that we're going to include? <laughs> well, I mean, at this point, so, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess stepping back, Unreal Tournament is a living project. We're going to keep improving over, the, over time. So 
there's going to be features that we're not thinking about right now that a year or a year and a half from now we decide this is the, the next, the most important thing for us to work on now. <laughs> but I'd say certainly in the short term, I, I think there's certainly, I expect, will be some limited customization in terms of maybe um, like uh, coloring, you know, meshes and things like that. But I mean, I think right now we're focused on building some really good character meshes and I doubt we're going to have a system exactly like UT3 where we had all these body parts that you merge together. Um, there were a lot of complexities. I know, you know, people like, for example, complained about the demo guy in UT3 always showed up, right? That's, well, that's because we couldn't build, um, it would be a big hitch to build those player meshes on the fly. So if somebody joined during play and they had a custom character, we had to wait to build that custom character until the next map change. So they were demo guy for the rest of that map. And so there were a lot of downsides to that mm -hmm. customization system that we still don't have a great solution on. I mean, if you have a high-end system with lots of cores and we can put it, spin it off another thread, but we can't, we don't want to build our game assuming, you know, those okay. kind of system specs. So, in the short term, we just want to make some great character models and we'll think about what the appropriate ways to provide customization options later. But, I mean, obviously one easy customization option is um, the community is going to be able to build player models as well, and so we'll have right. hopefully a large variety to choose from. And eventually there'll be a storefront where you can sell your custom yeah. models. Yeah. I think that's a great yes. thing. All right, does anybody have anything else they'd like to talk about? Okay, all right, so Joe is going to put up a slide for us, showing uh, where to follow us. Make sure that you visit the engine stream tomorrow. Unfortunately, I don't know everything that they're going to be talking about because I didn't get a chance to look at the thread. I know VR is going to be in there, so unrealengine.com slash, I'm sorry, twitch tv slash unrealengine.com. Um, and also, make sure to get to YouTube after the stream today, and we'll have this video live. And go to the wiki, go to the blog, and go to Polycon account and participate in our, our art challenge, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. And what's the address for Twitch again, for Unreal Engine? So, twitch.tv slash Unreal Engine? Yeah. I just want to make sure I get it right so everybody goes. Okay, that's it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>